In America, it is commonplace to say that we are a nation of immigrants, that the diverse populace is made up of people who come from all over the globe. And while this is true in a certain sense, the U.S. is home to people from literally all over the world, the U.S. has not been equally welcoming to all people throughout its history. This month on No History, No Self, we will examine the complex issues of immigration in U.S. history. We will attempt to explain, in brief, how the particular history of American immigration has created the wonderfully diverse nation that we see today. And, as we will see from most of history, the aims of the founding fathers like George Washington and the presidents and congresses that followed them was not to create a diverse nation like we see in the U.S. today. And this, in fact, becomes apparent to anyone who looks at the history of immigration from the time of the American Revolution in 1776 and after. When we think about the history of immigration into the U.S., we imagine that people have been coming here for centuries seeking better opportunities. And it's always been like that. The process seems almost timeless. Yet this myth leaves out one critical fact, that before the land could be settled, its original inhabitants had to be pushed out of their lands, as it happened in Hawaii, forced into reservations, think of the Trail of Tears, or in places like California, outright murdered in systematic campaigns. The title of ben historian Benjamin Madley's 2016 book, which documents this last process, captures it perfectly. It was an American genocide. Before American, immigrants, uh, before American immigrants could arrive, the Native Americans had to be forced to leave, one way or another. A second thing to note, in our era of demonizing immigrants and building walls, is that for most of U.S. history, immigration was not heavily regulated, at least not at the federal level. Up until the last decades of the 19th century, immigration was mostly a matter that was left to the states. Certain classes of immigrants, such as convicts, slaves, and later on, individuals with infectious diseases, were subjected to greater scrutiny upon arrival. This is what we call quarantine today. Yet, by and large, these prohibitions on entry were limited in scope, and they could be bypassed without much difficulty. It would be an overstatement to say that the U.S. had completely open borders before the 1900s, but even if they weren't completely open, they were indeed quite porous. Lastly, nowadays, once someone immigrates, their goal is to become a citizen. And to become a citizen means to achieve a particular legal status, to adopt a new identity, and to become part of a culture that makes one American. Although, of course, to be American means no single thing. What then of the history of citizenship in the U.S.? Well, what is most interesting about citizenship is that it is, like federal regulation of immigration, a phenomenon that really came into existence in the later 19th century. One telling illustration can be seen in the fact that none of the Founding Fathers, for instance, in their many discourses on liberty, freedom, rights, and such, spent a great deal of time on the concept of citizenship. The lack of attention paid to the idea is something that can, one can see in the Constitution itself. Notice how there is no clear definition in the Constitution of what it means to be a citizen. In fact, this is even more apparent in the Articles of Confederation, the predecessor document to the Constitution. In that document, the term citizen is mentioned more explicitly, yet with no greater clarity. In the Articles, citizenship is essentially synonymous with personhood. And this, incidentally, is one of the reasons that one need not be a citizen to be afforded rights under the Constitution. Undocumented peoples have constitutional rights too. Nothing in the Constitution says they don't. <laughs>